what's up guys? I'm back. Okay, so if you watch the other two versions of this video, I went over like a lot of the biggest questions that people like ask me about choosing a kayak and what kind of kayak I need and what do I need for fishing. So in this video, I'm going to touch base on the last parts of the things you need to know before you kayak fish and try to put my spin on it. Don't know how long it's going to take. So here we go. guys so one of the things I want to touch on first is that don't overthink the idea of choosing your kayak all right don't die from paralysis of analysis it's better to get a kayak and get your feet wet in it and get out there on the water and experience what you like than to spend all summer looking at kayaks as you're afraid to pull the trigger so Try to find a kayak that's in good condition, one that a lot of other people are using in your area and for what you're kind of fishing you're going to do, and go ahead and just snag one because you can always get your money back for it, usually. Usually probably the same amount you paid for it, and uh, they hold their value really well. So just go ahead and get one and then figure it out after you get one. Have a good idea of what you want. Get something around that category that fits your standards and just get on the water. So the next thing I want to talk about is PFDs. So I'm going to put mine right here on what I use. It's just a SteelQuest Fisherman, I think it's called. It's got two pockets in the front. Greg has one too. And all right, Greg, he's got one. He's, he's got the same one. Isn't it orange? Yellow. Yeah. Yellow. It's yellow. But they're really good. They last a while. It hasn't fell apart. I've had it for two or three seasons now. I had a cheap one from Academy to start out with. It only lasted about as long as the cheap part of it, which was about a year or two. It got all stained, nasty. The seams started coming out. So when you buy a life preserver for like 30 bucks or less, you're going to get a one-year life preserver because remember, your life depends on the life jacket. Also remember that inflatables don't always inflate. Right, Greg? No, inflatables do not always inflate. Uh, refer back to about seven months ago, one of Jack's videos, you'll see. Yeah, I'm gonna put that like right here where he was floating helplessly with his non-inflated life vest. Yeah, he was floating, he was floating. Anyways, moving right along. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is radios, okay? My radio died about a year ago. I had one of those Cobra Marines. It sucked. Like the thing like stopped working. The charger stopped working. The the dial wouldn't work very well on it. Like I needed a pair of pliers to like get the dial moving and the on off switch. So do you need a VHF radio? I would say yeah, but do I have one all the time? I'd say no. Um, I'm a rebel without a cause and I just put it in a, my cell phone in a plastic bag and don't go out more than three miles to where your cell phone don't work. So um, they're cool for if you want to, one dude's fishing way over there, one dude's fishing way over there, you got to fish on, you can talk and communicate, you can call boats and you can call for help. So I would say get one if you're going offshore. Um, but if you don't have one, just keep your cell phone and a waterproof bag locked away to where you can get it if you need it. Hope that helps. Another one that I have been asked about a ton is the Vibe Sea Ghost. Greg, you know anything about the Vibe Sea Ghost? No. I don't know anything about the Vibe Sea Ghost. A lot of people are using them. I haven't seen one sold around here. Is there one sold around here? Yeah, I've heard they work, and then I've heard some people say they're cheaper made-wise. I don't have any experience with them. I wish I could help you on that. So um, that's why I just stick with the, the big brands because I know that they have good quality workmanship. So moving right along. So if you watch those last videos, I'm going to put a link below if you haven't to where you can find those other two videos where I tried to explain as much as I could about starting out choosing a kayak and uh, what I thought about the big topics. I hope they help you when you're looking for the initial kayak. Links below, check them out. The next thing I wanna talk about choosing a kayak, that kayaks are like surfboards, all right? And when I say that, I mean that sometimes you need more than one. So each type of kayak has its own 
uh, thing that it's good for. Some are like versatile, not great in any aspect, but versatile can do a lot of things really well and work really good in those aspects. But um, like here's here's how it how it works. So like let's say you got an Adventure Island 16 or a, one of those Adventure 16s. It's like long, sleek, pedal drive, fast as grease lightning, but they're not they don't turn very well in the river. Um, like they they're big and long and like let's say you got a 16 foot paddle kayak, you're not going to just spin that thing around the lily pads. It's kind of tough. Now it'll stretch out, it'll be fast, and it'll cut the chop, but they, they're kind of a little like this, you know, and if you're a bigger dude, you know, that, or your sea legs aren't there, you might get uncomfortable. So when you look at them, like the Hobie Outback, it's like a barge, it's stable, it's nimble because it's got a rudder and a pedal drive system. It's stable, but the caveat is it gets to like three and a half, four miles an hour, and that's it. The whole speed is at its end, and that's all you're getting out of it. It it pushes its way through the chop instead of cuts through it like the the, the adventure. It um, same way with the like like that versus like a kraken that is long and sleek and it's fast but it's long and long and sleek you know you're giving things up when you are getting something else so um you got to think about do i want a well-crafted versatile kayak or do i want one that's great at something so like if i'm going to do a lot of offshore fishing and i'm going to travel a long ways the revo 16 might work better but that revo 16 or adventure 16 whatever it's called isn't going to work real good under the bridge pilings when you're trying to go in and out of them and you're in a washing machine and when i say washing machine i mean the bay is like cutting through the 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 bridge and you got a cross churn with like an east or west wind and you get that water that's you know shooting you like this while you're in there so think about that so you might buy a a hobie outback and it'll work in most situations until you decide to go in that really grassy shallow pond or you're on the flats and the tide's going out and now all of a sudden you got two miles to go back in the shallow water like some you know sometimes they they've got their their times when they're not great or you got a broken mirage drive you know like um like for me i have the hobie outback I use it for when I'm in the bay or I'm fighting big fish or I'm out there doing serious fishing. And then I've got my quest Shit. for when it's it's just a easy day after the office. You know, I can take it down off the, the rack. I can drag it across real fast, be out in the water, fish a little bit, come back. Um, and I can do it in shallow water. I can go, you know, down the shallow creeks with it. And it, it's just got its whole section that it's good at. Got to keep those in mind. Next topic, people have asked me about boats. What to do with boats. So bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Boats are dangerous. You have to look out for boats. You got to keep your head on a swivel like this. Because if you don't, they will run over you or your fishing line or just be rude because most, some of them are really rude. You're going to encounter them. It's just going to happen. So keep in mind or have your buddy, when you're not looking, if he's fighting a fish or something, be looking around because most of the time the way the waves go up and down, you're hidden below the water line and these boats aren't looking for kayakers. They're just on their merry way. Half of them aren't even paying attention and some are even drunk. Cobia fishermen are the worst. I was saying that Cobia fishermen are the worst. Cobia fishermen are definitely the worst. Yeah, they got that big tower up there and they still can't see you. They can see a fish in the water for two miles away. They're not going to see you, so they're not changing course. Just remember that. Next topic, carts. Okay, I am one that slack on my cart game. My cart game is not strong. I have two carts. I have two Hobie carts. And... I rarely use them because they're just one more thing I have to take half the time. And when I just drop it off in the sand, I don't need it a lot. Only time I really need my cart is if I'm going to the bridge or a new place or I have to go down a boardwalk or something. They're a lifesaver. They're definitely worth something to invest in. Um, if you're going a long way on the beach, like some of these beaches have started dredging and making the, the, the sand longer. 
get the beach wheels, or you can just stay PT strong and just power through it. Some people use like the- Good for uh, you, good for me. Right, all the way. You just, some people use the straps, like a, like a toe strap, and just loop it through the front of the kayak and just pull it. Most of the time, I just muscle it out and it works. Just don't carry a bunch of stuff with you. Leave all the heavy stuff behind. Take a couple rods and you'll be fine. But when you got a, a, a when you have a milk crate full of stuff, it gets heavy. And then if you've got two or three kings coming back with you, that's another 30, 40 pounds. So you know, carts are a good idea. Another asset that I have done videos on, they're on this channel, is uh, milk crates and building one. Milk crates are awesome. They're great for helping you to have rod holders for trolling. Just basically get some PVC pipe and get weird with it. Like, Make sure you get your milk crate, even if it's just to have one, but keep all your gear in there. It keeps it from rattling around the back of the kayak and they come in handy. The next thing I've been asked about a ton is standing in a kayak, can I stand in that kayak? And, and is it something I wanna do? So here's my thing about standing in the kayaks. I think they're overrated. Greg likes to stand in kayaks. Greg also falls out of kayaks while he's standing in kayaks while he's talking on his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, think about standing in a kayak. One, you lose rudder control. You're, you, if you're a paddler, your paddle's not in your hand. Kayak starts to drift. And, you know, like, you get away from your fishing spot. So, I don't stand, really. I'll stand every once in a while, but um, it's not really important to me. Now, if you're a push polar and you like to push pull across the flats, or if, I guess, it's early season or it's it's the bass are bedding and you want to be able to see them and you want to pitch in there and stuff maybe that's your thing if the water's calm you can do it a lot of times when i'm fishing i'm in that rickety water and i don't like to stand up because i'm a chicken half the time so just keep that in mind i'm not really big on standing if you like to stand pick a kayak that you can stand in something wide stable long that's just my opinion on that. Hope that helps. All right, and the last thing people have asked me about is about picking tandem kayaks. I'm not really big on tandem kayaks because me and Samantha can't get along long enough inside of a tandem kayak to fish. You can curse. So I don't do tandem kayaks. I'd rather have my own kayak. So therefore, we have two kayaks. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's just up to if you can ride with that person, can you paddle that person, can you keep from getting hooked when they throw the hook behind you. And if that, if you can do that, then get a tandem kayak. I, I've never had a tandem kayak, but you know, they make some really cool ones. But that's all I got guys. I hope this video uh, helped you. Uh, put in the comments below if there's anything else I need to put my opinion on. Any kayak is better than no kayak. Just go ahead and get your feet wet. Don't be paralysis by analysis. If it's a good kayak, a lot of people are using it, purchase it, get out there, get on the water. If you don't like it, you can always sell it. That's my theory on it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Yak Molly and Facebook at Yak Molly. And I'll see you guys later.